All right, 97.7 at Law Radio FM listeners. Tonight we got an amazing, talented individual hailing from the West Coast. We got the legendary former Death Row Records artist, Dogman Compton, on the line. How you doing this evening? Hey, bro, I'm doing great, great, great. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. I am doing wonderful. You know, we, we, uh, we were just jamming to some of your uh, new exclusive music that you actually sent uh, out Law Radio, man. Uh, so far, the listeners are digging everything they hear. Man, I appreciate it. I'm hoping y'all love it, man, because I've been working hard since I done, uh, went ahead and made my uh, transition to being uh, completely sober. So, you know, um, it's, it's, it's sober music. It's coming from the heart now. It's coming from exactly where I'm feeling and not not, a, not an altered state. So, yeah, man, I appreciate you listening and, and actually enjoying it, man, because it's, uh, it's, really, it's really something that I put together that, that means a lot. It's a lot to me. And the one thing I do want to ask you, Doug, like, what made you decide to get into the music industry for, like, from the beginning? Uh, basically, just being around my friends that were into it, um, you know, hanging around other artists in the industry that was getting into it, being a fan of music from day one, you know what I'm saying? Um, ever since I was a little kid, learning the words to R&B songs. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my grandpa and my, and my grandma listening to their music, so I've always been a fan. But what really got me interested in, in rapping was was being being a um, being around my friends at Compton High. You know, and a lot of them was was dope MCs, and um, always had a gift of gab and putting putting been a knack for putting words together. You know what I'm saying? I could talk my way out of a, out of a goddamn murder trial real quick, but um. It was just uh, listening to like uh, LL Cool J first off, and Curtis Blow, and you know all the all the old, old school artists that really paved the way, and listening to their messages, and me wanting to be a part of what they were doing, as well as you know my friends at school, just uh, basically supporting me and. and and, and us supporting each other, and you know what I'm saying, and it, it just started to happen. And when I realized I was good, I just I just ran with it. And you know, I'm, I'm probably jumping around the timeline here, but the one of my questions I had on the list, which I was going to bring up earlier uh, later on in the interview, I remember you brought up uh, just now LL Cool J, and I have to ask you, man, you actually had a role in the hit television series NCIS Los Angeles. The one thing I want to ask you, man, is like, because you said you grew up listening to Cool J, what was it like actually be able to work alongside him? on that television series oh brother it was it was cool it was it was so amazing you know what i'm saying jay he just he's like i was starstruck when i first met him and he's just so humble and so cool it's like he's still one of the fellas so it was just an amazing experience you know what i'm saying it was it was it was it was it was heartfelt too because he really gave me some good good words of encouragement and some motivation so, you know, yeah, man, as much props to LL Cool J, you know, because that guy here, the real one, you know, super cool, super humble. You know, it was it's, it was an amazing experience. I would love to hang out with LL again. And I do have to say, like, I actually watch that show religiously every single week, man. So it's actually really cool that, you know, just, an, just a talented individual like yourself had the opportunity of just being on such a such a huge television show, man. I, I don't think that show's ever going to end. It's been going on forever. Bro, it's still in my top five. It's still in my top five. All I watch is Nature Channels, NCIS, and Chicago PD, pretty much. <laughs> you know so, what? Yeah. Hey, that sounds like a pretty good lineup, man, especially with COVID-19 going on. There's not really a lot of TV shows actually still on TV. Yeah, bro. I, well, me, myself, personally, I don't stay glued to the television, and I don't, keep, I don't, I don't allow my kids to be glued to the television all day. You know, so... We, we basically have our time frames, but I, I prefer for them and myself to read more, you know what I'm saying, or get out and enjoy nature, you know what I'm saying? Technology got us so bound to the house, we forget what it was like to have fun with our friends playing at the park. So, it's, you know, it, it's just crazy. But as far as this COVID stuff is concerned, bro, I, uh, I practice a whole lot of cautiousness. I stay masked up. I keep my hand sanitizer on me. I stay taking my vitamin C's and my vitamins. Yeah, so I don't play with it, bro. Not at all. 
I wouldn't either, man. You know, we lo- we already lost a lot of great people within the entertainment industry due to COVID nineteen, man. It's uh, it's tragic. Yeah, bro. Rest in peace, Fred the God, son. You no, know, rest in peace, Fred the God, son. He was one of the first ones that I heard about that passed away due to this COVID pandemic, and that and that that brother right there was was just an amazing talent. Period. That was that was a loss to the industry right there. So, I'm, yeah, I most yeah, definitely people. agree with that. I really do think like he didn't he didn't get in my personal opinion, man. I think if he wouldn't have passed away, he most definitely would have blew up ten times more than than he already has before he passed away. So I got to say, God bless his soul. Man, God bless his soul, and I know for a fact if he would have been here, give him another year or two, he'd be up there with with the legendary greats. You know, his name is already marked in the industry, but. He was headed toward iconic status, so you know that 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 was a blow to the industry, and that you know that was not him not being safe. That was him not knowing what the, what the deal was. You know, a lot of people didn't know what the deal was in the beginning. Uh, you know, back in November, I actually had it, and the doctors didn't know what it was. I was in the hospital for about three weeks, and it just basically passed through my system. Um, I just had to be, I'm just blessed to have a, a strong immune system. So, you know, I, I, I say rest in peace to everybody that had it and passed away from it. Everybody who had a family member that passed away from it, a friend, a loved one, my condolences, you know, stay safe, man, and, and, and stay away from people right now, you know. <laughs> And I do want to say quickly before we move on to the next topic, I want to say I'm really glad that you actually overcame that terrible illness, man, and you are still here with us because I really do think, you know, Dogman Compton leaving the music industry this soon, I think that that, that wouldn't be good, man. So I'm really, truthfully glad you're still here with us. Man, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Man, thank you. COVID-19 sucks, bro. It sucks. So yeah, I don't I don't wish that on nobody. Three things I don't wish on nobody is death, prison, and COVID. Uh, no, it's just not no. Yeah. And I do want to ask you to talk about. Probably this is gonna take you back like quite a few years, but back in the year 1993, you actually were signed to Death Row Records. I have to ask you, how did that record deal come to be for you, and what was it like working with Suge Knight and and uh, and Death Row? <laughs> it was crazy, man. It was really crazy <laughs> working with Mr. Knight. Um, I got my deal uh, really through uh, my manager at the time. His name was Dwayne Washington. And um, what it was was I was just real big on my freestyle skills, and I was doing a lot of battles and entering a lot of shows, like, you know. And um, Dwayne kept pumping me to Shug because he knew Shug personally. So basically... One thing led to another, and Suge ended up telling him to bring me down, you know, to see if I'm worth getting a deal on Death Row. I went down there with no demo on word of mouth, um, sat there and waited on Suge for however many hours I waited. Then when I met him, got in the studio, he put on some beats, and he basically told me, look, if you're wasting my time, it's going to be a bad look on you. You probably won't leave up out of here walking right. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was like, damn, well, okay. Well, just play a beat. So the beat started coming on, and um, he had some, some of his other artists in there at the time. I won't say no names, but um, I ended up battling a couple of them, and then wrecking shop on them, and then he sent some other cats in there. I was hungry. I was on my way to being homeless. And that was my way out right there. So everybody he sent in that room was a victim that day. So after like an hour and a half or two hour two hours of me battling people over various beats and acapellas, she was satisfied. I saw a couple of people get beat up that night real bad, but I left with a lot of money in my pocket and a record contract to be signed within the next two weeks. And that's how I got signed to Death Row, basically through word of mouth and my freestyle skills. 
And the one thing I do what it was like when you when you said like if he's wasting your time, you would you would have like you wouldn't be walking straight. Was he actually? Do you think he was serious? Like, I, did you see that actually happen to people before? Like, where well, you were assigned <laughs> to death row? Yeah, I saw some shit. Yeah, he was serious. Cause a couple of cats that came in here on the same premise, they had demos or whatever, or came in here on the same premise as I, um, didn't fare so well. A couple of the cats that I battled that I've verbally abused so bad, um, also got physically assaulted outside of the, the studio, you know? So, yeah, it was real. That shit was pretty much, um, <clears throat> that was pretty much how he did shit. You know, he had his favorites that he took care of and he loved and wouldn't nothing happen to him and he wouldn't hurt and wouldn't do nothing to him. But anybody else, if you wasn't in his specific circle, you was liable to catch whatever he was going to do you. And before so, we, yeah. And before we move off the death row topic, uh, around 93, you were there when, like, the chronic was big and uh, doggy style was big as well. I have to ask you, what was it like actually working alongside Dre and Snoop? Man, it was it was it was fun. You know what I'm saying? It was kind of like, you know what I'm saying? The timing schedule and everything was crazy. Where you know, um, a lot of times I would go in there and, and they would already be gone. You know what I'm saying? Or sometimes it would be where I would have to wait to get my work in with them. But the times when I did work with them, man, it was all fun. You know what I'm saying? Snoop been the homie since forever. I'm still cool with Daz. I'm still cool with Corrupt. You know what I'm saying? I haven't seen Rage in a minute, but you know what I'm saying? I'm still great with RBX. I was just, I just chopped to RBA. As a matter of fact, shout out to RBX and Corrupt. They're still my niggas and Daz too, you know? Um, so, you know, um, damn, I lost my train of, I lost my train of thought. My bad. It's all good. Sitting here parked in my car, <laughs> sitting here parked in my car watching, watching the traffic. But yeah. You know, but working with working with everybody at Death Row, man, it was all fun. It was all love. It was it was an experience. Um, nothing like you could ever imagine unless you were actually there. But just to be a part of it and have those memories is special in itself. You know what I'm saying? Um, I never really got to reach my pinnacle with Death Row because of my gang affiliation and me not being willing to sacrifice my morals and my standards as far as my neighborhood and my gang banging to uh, appease, appease uh, Suge and make him happy the way he wanted me to. So, you know, I, I did my work in the cut with the fellas, but after a while with Suge, it was like, yeah, he tired of me not wanting to be a pyro, but I couldn't do that because I'm a crip and, you know... <laughs> That, that little switch and trying to do that for the money would have had me killed anyway. So, yeah, it was all good for a minute. But, you know, when it got all bad with Suge, that's when it was like, you know what, uh, it's time for me to do something else, you know? And when you said Daz Dillinger, man, I got to say, my personal opinion about Daz, he is such a phenomenal producer. He does not get enough credit for that producing skills, man, because he is just... He is literally just a just a lyrical assassin on the microphone. But when he makes those damn beats, oh my god, man! Like he can make a damn beat. <laughs> Let's just say that about Daz. Bro, a lot of people. He does not get his proper credit. A lot of people don't even know that Daz produced a lot of Tupac shit. You know what I'm saying? And um, he ain't getting his proper credit. You know what I'm saying? Like Dre is getting some of the credit that Daz supposed to be getting. So yeah, Daz is Daz is is, is a super genius. As far as his production skills, I can't take nothing away from his rhyming skills because that boy is a beast. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like, yeah, he did not get his just due, and he still hasn't got his his proper, you know what I'm saying, um, his proper notoriety. You know what I'm saying? He should be looked at like like Timberland or, 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 or Manny Fresh. He should be up there with Dre because it was Daz behind majority of some of that shit that we hear that we thought was Dre. Dre had a little influence on some of the shit that he was doing, but the majority of that was, a lot of that was Daz. You know what I'm saying? That dude's incredible. You know what I'm saying? He crazy, but he incredible. <laughs> That's my <laughs> homie. And also, um, going back to your uh, battle rapping uh, part of things, man, I saw a picture on your Facebook of you taking home a trophy from a battle rap. Uh, could you actually uh, tell us a bit more about the story behind that photo and 
You know, how many people did you annihilate that night? Uh, that was a 100-man rap battle. 99 people went in there, and 99 people suffered the consequences. It was a tournament um, back in, uh, that was in Long Beach, in the north, in the north Long Beach, in the back of this housing project called the Carmelitos Housing Projects. Um, more famously, uh, Lil Jabba Loke, you know what I'm saying, pretty much put them on the map because he from over there. So, um, but yeah, I uh, ended the battle and uh, basically had it in my mind that I wasn't leaving without the trophy and the money. And that's basically what happened. It was a clothing store called the Urban Underground Outlet that uh, put on these rap battles like once every other uh, couple of months. And that was just one that I won. I won uh, three of them in the L.A. area. One was uh, for 100 men, one was for 50 men, and the other one was for, I think, a 20-man tournament. And I ended up winning all three of those. So, yeah, I've been uh, doing this for a long time. And that was uh, back in the 90s. That was like 95, 96, I do believe. And also, I saw a uh, picture, I saw pictures on your Facebook as well, of you on the set of Training Day. I have to ask you, what was that experience like, and how did you actually land that role on Training Day? Man, I got to give all the credit to my daughter's mother. You know what I'm saying? Um, she basically saw saw an advertisement for open casting calls for uh, the Training Day, not the movie, but the TV series. And uh, she just told me, look, babe, take the car and go down there just see if you could get the part. I went down there, auditioned, took the headshots, and uh, about a week later, I got a call from the casting company. Yo, we want you to come down. We want to see you for this role. And uh, there it was. I actually had uh, three, three, um, I actually did three episodes. Oh, nice. I'm actually going to have to check that out. When I, when I saw Training Day, I, I thought it was the movie, but now that I know it's a show, I'm going to go back and actually check yeah, those out. It was actually the TV show based on the movie. Okay, I I didn't even know they actually made a TV show based on the movie, so I'm most definitely going to have to check that out, because I I had no clue they even made a TV show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't uh, take off the way they wanted to, but, yeah. It was, uh, I think, approximately 10 episodes, I think. If you don't mind me asking, what what uh, role did you actually play in that show? Like, what was your character's name? Oh, I didn't really have... A uh, uh, character name. I was a uh, background in that one. I was just a criminal, just an inmate in a prison scene. And also, uh, in 2008, you actually released your uh, debut album, Unstable and Disrespectful. I have to ask you, what's the story and inspiration behind that record? And of course, where can our listeners buy or stream themselves a copy? Uh, that is available on all major platforms streaming and otherwise for uh, physical hard copies you'd actually have to get in my inbox and holler at me directly I'll either pull up on you and slang you that or you can either uh, Venmo Venmo the cash to me and then I'll mail it out to you you know Um, but the story behind that was me going through a a mental transition in my life to whereas you know I'm older more mature, more thoughtful, um, less active as far as my gang banging in my city. You know, um, that was basically like um, my transition time for me to go ahead and have my fun with this album. I wanted it to have like a 90s feel as far as the production. And uh, I wanted to give it like that that 90s feel like uh that old school ice cube whereas once one song is basically me being an asshole being crazy you know being an old school me and the other one is basically the conversion of me the older me you know um that's where it goes into unstable and disrespectful because the majority of the album is me basically getting off my chest a lot of stuff that i didn't say in the previous works of art or in the previous bodies of work, should I say. So, you know, it was basically just one of those albums where I just wanted to get a lot of stuff off my chest, regardless of the outcome and how it sounded. I didn't care who liked it and who didn't like it. I didn't care what, what, um, what, 
basic um, fan base it was grabbing. I just wanted to throw it out there and get it off my chest because at the time, I, that's just the way I was feeling, unstable and disrespectful, you know? And also, a few months back, I, I believe it was right before this COVID stuff actually got really big, I noticed that uh, you were actually filming, uh, I believe, some music videos with Yuck Mouth of the Loonies in, like, a parking garage. I was actually wondering, like, um, uh, have the, has those videos dropped yet? And if so, like, where can our listeners actually check those out? And how did you get connected with Yuck Mouth? Yeah, that's actually uh, the chill from Compton's Most Wanted. Uh, that was one of his songs called The Hooker Part 2. That was the remix with Yuck Mouth on it. Uh, Yuck Mouth is just my homeboy. Um, we'll be working uh, in the future. But um, that was chill. He brought me out there um, because we're from the same neighborhood and we grew up together. we always been friends and we're working together on, a, on, on my next project right now. So he just basically asked me to come out and uh, show some support and show my face and, 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 you know what I'm saying, just get some more networking done and make this money to come out and be with them. So, you know, that's what I did. But the song is actually called The Hookup. It's on the Chills album from CMW, and the album is actually called Forehead. Y'all need to go get that, too. It's a, it's, that shit is a banger right there. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And also, uh, I remember when we were talking a few days ago, you said you have a brand new record coming out, and you actually sent me, like, a few songs, a few exclusive songs from that record. But I want to ask you, like, what can our listeners expect from this brand new Dogman Compton record? And do you know the estimated release date? That way our listeners can be on the lookout so they can, so they can pre-order themselves a copy. Um, actually looking to release it either in December of this year or January of next year. Um, I'm revamping uh, half of the album um, for new new production purposes. I'm uh, taking some of the uh, production that I did have and um, I'm going to redo that and just relay the songs to better production. I want a better quality sound. What people can expect from this is a better quality um a higher level of lyricism, bars are back, the stories are back, the content is elevated, so it's it's more of an adult album and not just more of like the unstable and disrespectful album that you got. It's kind of a a whole 180 from that. It's more of a as a it's more of a growth album. You know what I'm saying? Like this this new project is is more from the real personal standpoints of my life and not just the entertainment points of my music. So this one is, is, is of real value to me. This one is probably going to be what well, I won't say. Probably this project that I'm working on is going to be my best body of work thus far to date. And I do got to say, you know, that December, January release date is actually a perfect Christmas gift actually for like our, for our listeners, man. So I'm actually looking forward to that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're looking forward to it. It's coming. We don't need, we don't have a title for it at this time, but um, we're gonna come up with a title real soon. You know, basically the body of works are coming together. You heard what we're putting together so far, and everything has to be at least on those levels or better. If it's not better than what you heard when you hear the rest of the product, then it wasn't worth me making an album. So I'm really setting forth my best foot, putting forth my very best effort. You know what I'm saying? This is a, a clean and sober me on this product, on this project. So it's going to be a lot more different, more elevated, and less gangbanging in this one than people are used to for me. And also, directly after this interview, I'm going to be playing, actually, uh, one of those exclusive songs the moment we get off the air, which is called You Gonna Be Alright. And I have to ask you, uh, could you tell our listeners a bit more about that song? That way they can wrap their head around the meaning when they actually check it out. That song... It's real personal to me because I fight depression myself. That song is basically telling people, you know, even though you're going through whatever your situation is in your life, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's never so bad that you got to kill yourself. If you stay positive and you stay motivated in your life, whatever the factors are that's negative, that's bringing you down, that's hurting you, you know, if you just go ahead and try to live for one more day, if you just try to breathe for one more minute, you know what I'm saying, you're going to be all right. Everything ain't perfect in life. 
You know what I'm saying? We lose people that we love. We 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 get addicted to drugs. You know what I'm saying? Then we get clean. We lose our children. You know, um, it's just you know we we lose our homes. It's just so many things that cause depression, and not enough people are actually listening and paying t- paying attention to some of those people with signs. You know, my friend Fast, rest in peace, just killed himself recently. You know what I'm saying? Suicide because he couldn't handle the pressures or whatever was going on in his life. He couldn't handle it. So he ended his life. And me, I just feel like, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm getting emotional here. Um, we need somebody that's going to be there for us. We need somebody that at least is going to listen to us and tell us it's going to be okay and not be faking a funk. And my song is basically that for everybody that doesn't have somebody that says I'll listen. Like in my song, I really mean at the end of my song where I say, bang my line, my nigga wolf, let's fight together. I mean that if you can get in touch with me, if you just want to talk about whatever your depressing issues are, you know, get at me. Let's talk about this shit together because the last thing I want to see is somebody kill themselves because they can't handle the pressure, because they can't take what's going on. You know what I'm saying? So that song came from a real deep place in my life and it came from somewhere that where you know during that time I was really disturbed. I was going through some depression. So that song actually became my therapy. Because as I was writing the song, I was finding out more about myself. I was learning myself in ways that I didn't understand. So when it came time for me to actually lay the song, that's why you hear so much emotion in it, so much passion in the song because it was coming from a real deep-rooted place. It was coming from a hurt place that was trying to get better. And that's all I want to see for anybody that's depressed, anybody that's going through those type of situations. You know, just keep pushing. Don't give up. You're going to be all right. And that was the point behind that song. And so, Doug, man, I got to ask you, man, is there anything that I happen to miss during this interview? Anything else you want to promote? Will we still have you here live on the air? Well, at the moment, everything is pretty much being kept a secret. But what I can tell you is the next Dogman project that's coming is coming soon. And it's going to be a major project. Uh, I'm not going to have too many big features, but I'm going to have a couple of big features on there for you guys. And um, it's going to be it's going to be one of my best bodies of work, like I said, to date. So just keep your ears open and keep looking out, man, and enjoy enjoy them exclusives that I gave you. But the rest of the album is coming. It's just being worked on, and we're just taking our time and making it right. We don't want to just throw out no loose product. So this is the time in the interview, uh, Dogman, that I give a chance for the individual that comes on the radio station. Uh, just a chance to give shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to. And, of course, your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and your musical journey if they're not already doing so. Which your Dogman constant, so I hope they're following you. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Dogman Compton, Dogman underscore Compton on Instagram, Dexter St. Littles on Facebook, and those basically the, uh, and then it's Dogman underscore, Dogman underscore Compton on Snapchat also, and um, those are basically my outlets, um, that I only have one page, that is me answering, talking, I do get back at my folks, so, yeah, um, yeah, Dogman underscore Compton, Instagram, Dogman underscore Compton, uh, Snapchat, uh, Dexter St. Littles on uh, Facebook. Just holler at me. I holler back. And I gotta not, say, uh, <laughs> I gotta say, dog, man. Oh, man go ahead, go ahead. Just uh, thank you so much for coming on my radio station, man. Like, I, I grew up listening to your music, man. Um, it was an absolute honor just, just for you to be able to provide not only myself, but the listeners with 25 minutes every time, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I hope you stay safe man, out I there during this terrible you for pandemic. Having. Oh, you already know, bro. I'm socially, since I'm standing outside by myself with my mask on talking to you guys. <laughs> hey, well, you know what? I Nobody within 100 that, feet of me. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. You know, I'm, I play it real cautious. I was actually uh, on my way to, uh, I just bought a new car, so I was actually on my way to go take it to the kids to go surprise them because they didn't know what I was doing today. So, yeah, I had to pull over because I remember you. We had the interview, and I was not about to miss it. Not at all. 
I, and I appreciate that so much, man, you know, especially from a, a huge individual like yourself, man, you know what I mean? Uh, I look at it as, man, you've, you've done so much within the music industry, so realistically, man, you know what I mean? You're, do, you're doing my station a favor by coming on, man, so thank you so much again, man, thank you. Oh man, much appreciated. You're welcome. No problem at all, man. Whenever you, whenever you want me on, man, I'm happy to come on for you. I appreciate everybody that came out and listened. I appreciate, you know, all the fans that that still support, you know, the old school brand of hip hop, the legendary style. You know, um, we give a shout out to uh, my cousin Wiz Propane, another hot, super hot Compton artist. Of course, Compton's most wanted. The homie Big to the boy. Uh, Boom Bam, uh, formerly of CMW. Um, shoot, who else? My cousin Black Diamond, uh, Kershawn Watts. That's my little baby cousin right there. Uh, shout out everybody from the New Era. Uh, shout out all the Compton. Shout out Outlaw Radio. Um, shit, DJ Immortal. Shouts out to you, bro. You know what I'm saying? And shout out everybody that took the time out this to say, I want to hear what Dog Man talking about. I appreciate it, man. And if I was supposed to owe you a shout out and you listening and I didn't I apologize and this shout out is for you and again man you are most certainly welcome and thank you but I won't keep you because I know it's California it's probably hot outside and you've been talking for 30 plus minutes with your mask on so I won't keep you much longer man but thank you so much again and drive drive safe in that brand new vehicle man and uh, we most definitely will talk soon uh, you already know bro yes sir yes sir thank you for having me on, bro. thank you for having me on I appreciate it you're most certainly welcome, brother. Thank you. Yep, yep. Have a good one. You as well. Thank you. Have a good night.